Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and over my many years of playing Pokemon, there have been several specific Pokemon that seem to have gone out of their way to ruin my day. Today I'm going to be going over Pokemon that have wronged me, meaning they did something that upset me so much that I vividly remember the event to this day. Or, in the case of one specifically, it literally physically injured me. Let's start with the Pokemon that you all expected me to bring up. Miltank. Miltank has been my least favorite Pokemon for many years, and that's due to both its uncomfortable design, primarily the floppy sausage nipples, and how frustrated it has made me in the past. No! God damn it! The most infamous example is, of course, Whitney's Miltank. This Pokemon seems to have been intentionally designed to infuriate the player. Let's look at the Gen 4 version of Whitney's Miltank, since that was the first Whitney's Miltank that I ever fought. Miltank has a base stat total of 490, with its most impressive stats being HP, Defense, and Speed. This means that not only is it hard to KO, but it's likely faster than you as well, especially that early in the game. And that speed matters because it knows Stomp. If the Stomp user moves first, it has a 30% chance to cause the target to flinch. This means that if Whitney's Mill Tank outspeeds you, which it probably does, its stomping will prevent you from doing anything almost a third of the time. But that's not its only way of preventing action. It also has Attract, which is guaranteed to hit on a male Pokemon. You know which Pokemon has an 87.5% chance to be male? Your starter. If your Pokemon ends up infatuated, is slower than Miltank, and Miltank uses Stomp every turn, then you will get to do nothing 65% of the time, which is horrifying. And don't think you could just use a Ghastly to get around the Stomp problems, because this Miltank has Scrappy an ability that lets it hit ghost types with normal and fighting type moves. In addition to preventing you from moving, it also has rollout, which can absolutely crush your team if it doesn't end up missing, since it gets stronger every turn, and milk drink to heal itself back up even when she's run out of potions. Milk drink is especially infuriating due to Miltank's bulk. Because it's not frail, you probably have to whittle down its HP over time, but then it can instantly wipe out most of your work with just one milk drink. Status conditions like poison, paralysis, and burn can go a long way toward making Miltank easier to handle, but the Gen 4 version has a Lumberry, meaning you'll have to inflict a status condition twice. The battle is not impossible, of course, but it sure did upset me. My first ever battle against Whitney was when Soul Silver came out in the US back in 2010. And in my first attempt against her, I lost. The first time that had happened to me since my very first Pokemon playthrough of Ruby. I was able to beat her on my second attempt, but I used a full team of six Pokemon and a ton of potions and maybe some revives too. So while I did win, it wasn't a satisfying win since I felt like I cheated. I have fought Whitney again several times since then and the battles have, for the most part, gone more smoothly, but that's because I've gone out of my way to use specific strategies to handle her, like using rock types or the in-game trade Machop. But that very first face-off, the bad memory is burned into my mind. That's not the only mill tank to have ruined my day though. Back in the Battle Mason in Gen 6, I was determined to get a 50 win streak. I eventually did so in doubles, but before I attempted that, I was doing singles. One of my many failed attempts was ended by this mill tank. The body slam paralysis it inflicted was frankly traumatizing. I don't remember all the details of the battle, but I do remember being really, really upset about it. The next Pokemon is one that, unlike Miltank, I actually like as a Pokemon. However, there is one in particular that I would love to incinerate within the deepest depths of the Earth's core. Wands Kingdra. This Pokemon is almost on the same level of evil as Whitney's Miltank, but I think it's less famous because it's only appeared in one game ever, Emerald. This is Wands Kingdra. Its attacking moves are Water Pulse and Ice Beam, both moves that can inflict status conditions. Then it has Double Team, a move that anyone that has ever faced it knows is the absolute worst. Boosting Evasion is actually banned in Smog on Competitive because it shifts the battle from strategy to just stupid luck. Having your moves miss over and over and over again with no way to deal with it is just extremely not fun. This is particularly frustrating with Wands Kingdra. A lot of double teaming Pokemon will be taken out if you're able to hit them just once. 
but Juan's Kingdra, thanks to existing before the fairy type, is only weak to Dragon, an uncommon attacking type that it can counter with Ice Beam. This means you're likely trying to take it down with just neutral damage, something that will take a while thanks to the bulk that's a part of its excellent 540 base stat total. In short, that means you'll be whittling its health down slowly, which is a problem because it can rest. With one move, just one move, it can be back up to full HP and remove any status conditions you put on it to circumvent its bulk, like toxic poison. Yes, it will have to sleep for two turns, but only after the first time thanks to the Chesto Berry. And if it's gotten double teams up, it may just dodge your hits, meaning it's got a complete free heal for nothing. I have faced Wands Kingdra three times in the last couple years. One of them was in my first Team Sky video, but that was fine because I had Rayquaza. The first of the three was in my Emerald with No New Moves challenge, where Kingdra took out half of my team by avoiding attacks, barely surviving when they did hit, and healing back up to full multiple times. I land two more while it's sleeping, and it gets me down to red with Ice Beam. I have to go for Psybeam to KO it before it can rest, and it hits. But this piece of garbage, stupid, straw-nosed fish lives with one. I did end up winning my first try, but it was a very long, very frustrating battle. I fought it again in my Emerald with my original team video, and it was even worse, getting a freeze at one point. I was so frustrated that I intentionally let it sweep me so I could start over and try to deal with it before it boosted its evasion. The second time I was able to beat it much easier thanks to Leech Seed, one of the few ways to chip away at its health that rest does not cancel out. In short, the next time I play through Gen 3 Hoenn, I might just play Ruby and Sapphire for the sole purposes of avoiding this thing. But you know what you should not avoid is subscribing to my channel, <laughs> Next up is... A security alert at home? I gotta go. shower. Oh, you know me, just practicing for the international hula dancing competition. No, obviously I'm showering, you buffoon. Uh, but why in my shower? You have the largest stash of Dr. Squatch soap, the sponsor of today's video, that I've ever heard of. Look at this. It's like the Leaning Tower of Base. More like the Leaning Tower of Natural and Nourishing Ingredients with no harsh chemicals. Ooh, or the Leaning Tower of Fantastic Sinks that will boost your confidence. Ooh, or the Leaning Tower of Being Made in the USA. Ooh, or the Leaning Tower of Having Your Way of Showering Changed for the Better. Ooh, or the Leaning Tower of Also Offering a Selection of Other Products like Shampoo and Conditioner. Ooh, or the Leaning Tower of Their Popular and Beloved by Me Scent Pine Jar. Well, I guess that's just part of the tower. But you clearly get it. Dr. Squatch soap is amazing. That's why I have so much of it. Oh, I wasn't judging you for having so much. I just wanted some. And you have a lot. And your shower was conveniently located here. Ugh, grunty boy, I've told you this so many times, but you need to buy your own. New customers can get 20% off orders of $20 or more by using code DSCMNJTV. The link is in the description below. Gosh, that is just such a fabulous deal. Not as good as free, though. Get out. All right, ta-ta! Anyways, thanks so much to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring, but now let me get back to the office. The next Pokemon is not one specific instance of a Pokemon. It's one that I feel wronged by basically every time it shows up. Watchog. This may come as a surprise to some of you since unlike Miltank and Kingdra, Watchog is not a very strong Pokemon. It's a relatively weak early game normal type. So why is it so frustrating for me? Well, that's because it's a Pokemon that should be defeated easily, but just delays its defeat every time by being infuriating. Let's look at the level up move set for Patrat and Watchog in Gen 5. Patrat gets Hypnosis at level 18, then evolves to Watchog at level 20, where it learns Confuse Ray, and then it gets Super Fang at level 22. In rapid succession, this Pokemon ends up with one of the most annoying move sets in the game. 
With relative ease, it can stack both confusion and sleep onto your Pokemon, meaning that you're not gonna move a lot of the time, and with confusion, if you don't move, you're taking damage. And then while you're not moving, it's using Super Fang on you, a move that, yeah, it can't Oko you, but it can do big damage, half of your max HP if you're at full even if you're using a Pokemon that resists it, like a rock or a steel type. Watchog is not particularly difficult to defeat, it's just really annoying. And that annoyingness is amplified by its frequency in the Unova games. First is Lenora's, and then Plasma Grunts seem to adore them. You're dealing with them all the time, and while you're not gonna lose, you are going to have to heal up at least one of your team members most of the time after fighting one. Watchog's consistent bothersomeness, plus its stupid face, have definitely earned it a spot in my top 10 least favorite Pokemon. Another Pokemon like Watchog that has caused me pain most every time it shows up is Wobbuffet. And why not to a lesser degree? You probably know how bothersome it is to fight a Wobbuffet. It's like playing Russian roulette. You hit it with a physical move, it could use counter and destroy you. You use a special move, and it could use mirror coat and destroy you. You KO it as it uses destiny bond, you're dead. And then safeguard can prevent you from whittling it down with poison or burn. Its ability shadow tag also prevents you from swapping to your team member best suited to fight it. Why not has these same issues, but its stats are a lot worse, so it's a lot easier to KO in just one hit. Thankfully, in normal playthroughs, Wobbuffets are not encountered very often. But in randomizers, more specifically randomizer Nuzlocks, Wobbuffets kill. A long time ago, I was doing a race to see who could beat the champion first in a randomizer Nuzlocke, and I was on pace to do so, but then the last Pokemon of the champion was a Wobbuffet that not only killed my strongest Pokemon, but delayed me long enough to where I didn't win. It was incredibly upsetting. Plus, any other time I encountered a Why Not or Wobbuffet in a Nuzlocke, it made things super stressful trying to figure out a way to KO it without losing one of your Pokemon. I don't hate Wobbuffet's design, but I certainly don't love it, so with all the stress it has caused me, that's enough for me to resent it to this day. Speaking of Nuzlocke, there are quite a few Pokemon that have wronged me by killing my beloved team members in my Nuzlocke. I've only done a few Nuzlocke, but the deaths from the very first one have stuck with me the most. If you want the full story, check out my video about my first Nuzlocke, but to summarize, here are the Pokemon that I still think about to this day and resent as a result because they killed a team member that I really cared about. Mars's Perugly killed Defcon the Staravia, a random gym trainer's Haunter killed Robin the Golbat, Cyrus's Gyarados killed Gigawatt the Luxray, Cyrus's Crobat killed Waifu the Gardevoir, and my rival Snorlax killed Ludacris the Infernape in the last battle before the league. I like most of the species that I just mentioned, but I will always hold on to an unhealthy amount of contempt for these specific ones. Now let's shift gears from Pokemon that wronged me with their actions in battle to Pokemon that wronged me with their actions mostly outside of battle, shiny Pokemon. The first one being Shiny Kabuto, the Pokemon that literally caused me physical injury. Not long after Pokemon Let's Go came out, I decided to embark on a quest to defeat every master trainer using only Shiny Pokemon. I enjoyed Shiny hunting in that game more than any game previously, and I thought it would be a good quest for me to embark on. I'm happy to report that I did complete it, and you can see the finished journey in this video, but there were some brutally long hunts along the way. I recall Magnemite and Electabuzz taking a really long time, and aside from Mewtwo, which I got pleasantly quickly, the legendary resets took a while as well since there was no way to soft reset. But none of them took as long as Kabuto. You shiny hunt for Kabuto by manually mashing A through the fossil revival process until you run out of fossils, followed by resetting the game and doing it again. What makes this even harder is that the shiny charm does not affect the fossil revival, meaning I was doing this with the full odds of one in 4,096. It took months and over 7,000 Kabuto encounters, plus the time I spent on Ammonite as well, but I did eventually get the shiny Kabuto. Versailles remake in X and Y. If I recall enough, uh oh my God! Yeah! That was the longest shiny hunt I will ever do. Notice how I said, will ever do. Yes, it's the longest I've ever done, but I will never ever do a shiny hunt that long again. It was 
so, so miserable to the point that I literally sprained my wrist. After months of spending literally hours a day mashing A in one hand or the other with a Joy-Con, I was having some serious wrist pain. Like I had bought a Game Boy Advance SP for nostalgia's sake and holding it like this was literally painful to do. So I couldn't really play it for very long. I eventually went to a hand and wrist doctor and they took some x-rays and they told me that my right wrist was somewhat damaged and my left one was just plain sprained. Shiny hunting literally injured me. Apparently I'm predisposed to wrist problems because I have loose ligaments, which sounds like an excuse a child would make to get out of PE, but I swear it's what the doctor told me. I had to wear a brace all day for months. It was horrible. And while I'm good now, I still blame Kabuto for taking so darn long that it caused me physical harm. Another shiny Pokemon that wronged me during my shiny master quest was not one that took too long to show up, but one that showed up too often. Shiny Chansey. And let's go, there are certain Pokemon that show up as special spawns, also called rare spawns by some places. If you don't have a catch combo, they're very rare. But the larger your catch combo for a particular Pokemon, the more likely they are to show up. If you get to a catch combo of 31, the number needed for maximum shiny odds, the special spawn Pokemon is basically guaranteed to be there. Only one can show up at a time, but there will basically always be one. You run into one to get rid of it, another one shows up immediately. This is why I don't really like the term rare spawn when referring to these Pokemon. Cause yeah, they start out really rare, but after a catch combo that's high enough, they're not rare at all. Due to the nature of let's go shiny hunting, this means that in most places, you'll have a special spawn Pokemon running around the field at all times. And Chansey is by far the most common special spawn in the game before you unlock the flying ones, Charizard and Dragonite. This led to me getting a lot of shiny Chanseys. It's clearly annoying to get a wrong shiny that you already have when you're hunting for one that you don't already have, but during my Let's Go hunts, there were multiple times where I would get several shiny chances before I even got the one shiny I was looking for. And it was even more frustrating because there was only ever one chancy on screen at a time. Whereas like Magnemite, for example, there'd be several around at one time, and yet I was getting all these shiny chances when I just needed one Magnemite. I got so many of these that you can literally watch my sanity dwindle over time as more and more showed up. Aw, oh, man. Ugh, everything is garbage. Come on! I hate you! You've gotta be kidding me! I predicted it! I called it! I said we were gonna get another freaking shiny Chansey before a shiny Magnemite showed up and I was right. You've got to be kidding me. I'm gonna die. Oh, come on. Come on, are you kidding me? Oh man. Why does this keep happening to me? Why do these stupid shiny chances? I've seen so many scythers. I've seen so many scythers. Look at all those scythers. There's three times as many Scythers as Chanseys on screen right now, but no, it's a Shiny Chansey. And then a couple years later, I thought I was done with Shiny Chansey because I had finished Shiny Hunting and Let's Go. But then a video I did with Pokemon 7 recently proved that Shiny Chansey can always come back with a vengeance. The video was the first to get a Shiny Rainbow Team wins, and in this moment, I needed specifically an orange Shiny. What color is Chansey? It's like greenish, man. I feel like an argument could be made for it being orange. Orange? The Chansey is orange if you say the words. Subscribe to Purple Clip in your community oh, tab. No. 
Ooh, wait a oh, minute. Oh, in my community <laughs> tab? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll do that. Seven. Come on. Watch after all this, I don't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Second to last Pokeball. Oh, come on. Instantly broke out. <sighs> Chansey, I swear to God. <laughs> B! One, two, no! Yes! Yes! That's why you don't pay off the refs, Mikey! That's why you can't do it! Chansey has just earned a spot in my top 10 least favorite Pokemon. Watch after all this, I don't catch it. Yeah, shiny Chansey is a massive jerk. The final shiny Pokemon that have wronged me are the ones that got away. The ones that I failed. Not on purpose. I failed most of the shiny Chanseys because I didn't want them. I am aware of only three legit ones. One of them was a shiny Golbat in Let's Go. It spawned in a cave as I was going up a ladder and therefore was gone. However, that one didn't really upset me since I already had several shiny Zubats or Golbats at the time. And so I would have run from it anyways cause I didn't want to break my catch combo. So I don't count that one as wronging me. But the other two were shiny fails that I was upset about. One of them was shiny Weepin' Bell. I don't have the footage anymore, but it happened on a stream. I was horde hunting in my X version, looking for something that was not Weepin' Bell, and the horde of Weepin' Bell showed up. I didn't see the sparkles, and since shiny Weepin' Bell doesn't look that different from regular Weepin' Bell, especially in X and Y when the color saturation is not very good, I ran from the battle, never having seen it. The chat informed me that this happened, and I was so upset that I immediately ended the stream. And the other fail was my first ever shiny, a shiny Electrike in my original Ruby. And it definitely wronged me. It broke out of all of my Pokeballs. I did get a shiny Electrike in Omega Ruby many years later as kind of a reclaiming thing, but I would have preferred to catch the first ever shiny that I found. And the last Pokemon that wronged me was Helioptile. Not for being tough to battle or being a shiny that caused me some kind of frustration, but for evolving with a stone. For some reason, when I played X for the first time, I decided I was going to try to just figure it out without looking anything up. And so I had a Helium tile on my team and leveled this thing up to like level 45 and it still hadn't evolved and it was sucking at that point in the game. So eventually I gave in and looked up and saw that I could have evolved it with a sunstone many, many hours previously. So that was dumb. You should always look up evolution methods, but I still blame Helioptile for not just evolving by level up. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, McVins, gotta catch them all.